This is the Deathstalker Chroma by Razer. Welcome to Came From A Box, I'm Sergio I.M. Razer currently sells four versions of the Deathstalker, this being the latest, Chroma Edition. I picked this up about a week after it was announced, I've been testing it out on a number of games, and it's been performing really, really well. It's very sleek and low profile, and one thing that I like is that it's not loud like a mechanical keyboard, so if you stream where your mic is always on, your fans, as well as your neighbors, will appreciate that. But of course, that's not the only reason why I bought this. Uh, there's a lot more, so let's get to the details. So a quick look at the box. Um, up here we have that chroma label that they put on all their devices that utilize that lighting. Then down here, Razer Deathstalker Chroma, keyboard layout QWERTY English, some stuff that we'll talk about soon. Of course, the logo on the top right. Uh, more stuff on the top here. The back has a lot of info, as always with their boxes. Razer is really good with that. Um, three backlighting zones displayed right there. Programmable keys, chroma lighting, etc., etc. We'll talk about all of this and more in a little bit. But let me open this up. So inside, we're treated to the Razer logo, and let's see if I can figure this out easily enough. There it is. It's really lightweight. I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit as well. So, let's talk less about the box and more about the keyboard itself. So, inside the box, you get a box. And inside this box, you get paperwork, of course, with stickers, but not normal stickers, chroma stickers, yeah. And of course, the keyboard. Like its siblings, the Deathstalker Chroma is compatible with Windows and Mac OS, and so is the Razer Synapse software, that being their configurator, that sort of unites and allows you to customize all of the Razer um, peripherals. Dimensions. We have a length of 18.1 inches with a width of 8.4 and a height of 0.84 inches. So pretty thin, especially when compared to those big and chunky gaming keyboards out there. Now, as for weight, it's very light coming in at 0.84 pounds. So you can take this around with you if you go to lands or you go visit a friend's house or whatever. You can easily do that, it's very light. With that aside, let's move on to the main features and for your convenience, I will be splitting up the video in sections which you can view in the description below. As you can see, it is a traditionally laid out QWERTY keyboard. It has 104 keys. Yes, I counted, I hope I'm right. And it has no extra keys on any of the sides, such as what you're sort of used to seeing with some gaming keyboards out there. And that's fine with me because I never really use those. The keys feel very smooth, but not at all slippery. Now they have an almost hollow feel to them when pressed because they're so light, but don't take that as a negative. They are chiclet style keys and you'll notice that they're very slim and flat, just like a chiclet. Now, um, as to how flat they are, two millimeters thin, so very flat. The reason that is a good thing is because when you press down, you reach the actuation point faster. By that, I mean when you react and press down on a key, the corresponding action occurs quicker than with an average square size keycap with a spring. The Death Soccer Chroma also offers 10 key rollover, or as some call it, anti-ghosting, but only in gaming mode. Without gaming mode, it's locked at six. So key roller is great for situations when you're in a first person shooter and let's say you're crouching with control while moving diagonally with two keys while using your microphone over here with another key and changing weapons with another and throwing that grenade while doing something else, blah, 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 until you run out of fingers. So if you can manage to do that, you should be good. All of them will register. Point being, 10 or more key rollover is not a necessity, but it is a welcome luxury to have. So everything I mentioned is pretty great, but there's two things that I personally have issues with, and that is the lack of media or volume keys and the location of the Windows key. The first is mentioned, there's no dedicated media or volume keys. And as someone who's 
always had them, I definitely am missing the ability to just mute the volume with one hand. So you have to use the function key along with the corresponding F key to use some of those shortcuts. But there is a way around that in the next section which I'll get to shortly. Now for the second, normally every keyboard out there has the Windows key in the same location or also on the right here next to the control key. But when you play games, one of the worst things that can happen is that you accidentally hit that key and access the start menu, throwing you out of the game. I sort of wish they switched places with the function key because then by default, that wouldn't really be a problem. Bad news? You can't seem to customize the Windows key. But the good news is you can utilize gaming mode, and I'll explain that in our next section. When in gaming mode, which is indicated by this little icon with the crosshairs centered on the letter G, it disables the Windows key, Alt F4, which is a shortcut to exit a program, and Alt Tab, which lets you switch between windows. And yes, you do have the option to choose as to which of those three it disables by ticking them on or off in the software. Reason it disables those keys is because they are notoriously known to take you out of whatever game you're in if you hit them by accident. So big fan of that mode, it just gives you less to worry about. Every key on the Deathstalker or Chroma is customizable through the Synapse software except for the Windows and Function key. At least from what I've tried. If I'm wrong, please let me know. I'll put that in the description. Uh, through the Synapse software, you can set up multiple profiles with custom keys and switch between them. Also, when you customize a key in the software, it changes it to green so you can easily find all the keys that you've customized. What I ended up doing was replacing a few of the F keys up here with media keys, so this way I don't have to use two hands to access that option. Problem being that I now can't use the F keys associated with those unless I rebind or switch profiles. I'm hoping that can be easily addressed with a software update where you just allow the F keys and functions to swap places, meaning that you can access F1 through 12 by pressing function plus that key. Logitech allows you to do that and it's one of my favorite things. Another thing the Death Soccer allows you to do is create macros very quickly using the on the fly macro record button with the shortcut being function key F9. After you press it, you then execute your keystrokes Press the record button again and it begins to blink so you then press the key you want to bind to that macro and finally press the record button one last time to finalize. Afterwards you can view your macro on the Synapse software if you'd like to edit or delete it. So having Chroma at the end of the name means that you can of course have up to 16.8 million color options, which is a lot. There's three settings of brightness, dim, normal, and bright, but it allows you to adjust between them so you can find what suits your needs. You can do that by using function F11 to dim or function F12 to brighten the keyboard. And there's about 20 ticks in between if that makes any sense. The Synapse software has a Chroma configurator which allows you to customize up to three sections of the keyboard and they are this main part on the left right here, the arrow keys and those above it, and the numpad on the far right. To those three zones you can assign a different static color such as red on the left, yellow on the middle, orange on the right. Then you also have three effects which are breathing, spectrum lighting, and wave. And each does have a number of features you can customize such as duration when it's breathing, speed on the wave for which I put way down to reduce the chance of a seizure, and a few others here and there. Sadly, um, you can't seem to assign one of those custom effects to each zone though. By that I mean you can't have the left breathing, the middle going through spectrum lighting, and the right doing the wave. Or at least I wasn't able to easily find a way to do so. One thing I did want to bring up was that when you turn the lighting off, or if it's in a mode such as breathing or wave, when they fluctuate on and off, Unless you know your keyboard layout really well, it's slightly difficult to see the keys without lighting. So that means if you're playing in the dark and you don't want the lights on for some reason, you're probably not going to be able to tell that this key is that and that key is this and this key is that, unless your muscle memory is on point of course. So a few last things before wrapping this up. On the back of the keyboard we have rubber on all corners, but then we also have a large bar of rubber right below the wrist rest, which is the area that you see the most pressure when using a keyboard, right? So when you're using it, you don't have to worry about this moving because it won't. Now, it's always in an incline, but it also has one additional level, which puts it up a little higher, but not too high. And then the feet themselves also have rubber on them. 
And then finally, the wrist rest right here. It looks really pretty. It has these little geometric shapes inside and the logo in the middle, which doesn't light up. It's a little weird, but hey, that's fine. Um, it, it's it's not, there's not a lot of traction there. So if you're playing a game, your hand can actually s slide left to right. And I never thought I'd want that, but after having rubber on here for so long, I grew used to that. And now, not having it, I find that it's much easier to adjust and move around the keyboard with my right hand. So here are my pros and cons. Pros, keys, chiclet two millimeters thin, they're programmable and they have 10 key rollover. Lighting, 16.8 million colors that you can mess around with and choose what you like, and then three zones of backlighting. Low profile, not the box of course, the keyboard. Um, it's very thin, very light, and it just looks really good on your desk. And finally, ecosystem. By that I mean that it works really well utilizing the Synapse software. So if you have a mouse from Razer as well, you can sync the lighting as well as macros and all those profiles you have on board. Cons, the not so good stuff. First up is the feel of the keyboard itself. Now it is a matte texture, so it will get all those oils on your fingers. And also it's chiclet styled, so that means there's no curvature. So it may not be for everyone. Now the next one's a little bit weird. It is a wired keyboard, and I feel like by now we should be able to have a wireless option, especially considering we have the Naga Epic Chroma. I do know people worry about latency and worry about, you know, that affecting your gameplay, but it's just something I would like to see, or at least even a micro USB detachable cable on the keyboard itself, which it is lacking. And you know this one was coming. No dedicated media or volume keys, and by that I mean mute, volume up, etc. You have to press function and the key itself. Now that may not bother many people, but I've been using that for years and years, and I wish you could at least swap the function options so instead of F1, it would just do volume and you have to press function to get F1. The last little bit is lighting. Not that it's bad lighting, it's just that it's missing two effects that other Razer keyboards have, and that is Ripple and React, which I sort of miss. The other thing that's a little annoying though is the three zone lighting. That means that you can only work on those zones instead of customizing every little key to light up a specific way. So who is this keyboard for? Who is the target audience? Well, obviously it's perfect for those looking for a low profile keyboard that has that chroma lighting. It stands out on its own because it's not like those other gaming keyboards out there with a bunch of additional keys. It's very clean, very simple, looks really good, yet it still has 10 key rollover, on the fly macros, and programmable keys. So that's why I got it. Now, if you're thinking of picking one up, or if you have one, please let me know what your thoughts are on it in the comments below. I'll also help you out by answering any and all questions you may have. So it's currently going for around $100, and I'll provide some store links as well as more information in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. If you like the video or have any questions, make sure to let us know in the comments below. Now, if you want to support the channel and help us out, feel free to click that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content. Of course, if you want to follow us and interact with us, you can do so on Twitter, Facebook, and a bunch of other sites, which I'll put down below. Thank you so much. My name is Sergio IM, and I'll see you guys for the next box.